Hello, I'm Trevor, and I'm excited to invite you to the JPEG experience. Today, we're tracking a little comet named Neowise. Please join me as I will try and capture Neowise. Today the comet will be the closest to Earth and will start traveling away not to be seen again for a few thousand years. The comet is getting dimmer every day while it moves away from the sun, but it's too interesting of a subject to pass on. I'm no expert in comets, but I've been enjoying the unusual opportunity of photographing Neowise over the past few weeks with mixed results. Mostly, I've been places around Los Angeles with a ton of light pollution, like Santa Monica, Hollywood, and even Angeles National Forest. Tonight, I plan on heading out to the darkest skies available to me, and unfortunately, it is a weekday, and I have work early tomorrow morning, so I have to keep it reasonably close to home. I have decided to drive to the Los Padres National Forest, about 100 miles outside of Los Angeles. It should have Bortle 3 skies, which is the best available in the surrounding area. There is no real point making this a tutorial video with the comet leaving so soon, but I do want to share the journey and experience with you. My plan is to get as high on a mountain as possible with an unobstructed view of the horizon to the northwest. My game plan is to have two cameras set up. First will be an experiment with my 5DS and my 100 to 400 millimeter on a star tracker, which may or may not work due to the weight of the body and lens. I recently got the Canon RF 15-35 to 2.8 and this is its very first trip. The wide angle may not be the best to capture a comet, but I'm too excited with this new lens to go with anything else. I plan to arrive before sunset and start a time lapse to capture sunset, the moonset, and the comet Neowise in the same 4 hour time lapse. My bags are packed, let's go. All right, we just arrived. First time here in this part of the Los Padres National Forest. I was kind of hoping to park and have a view just behind the truck and be able to uh, just set up camp basically just there by my truck. Uh, looks like a good spot, good elevation, a good view of the horizon. But as you can see just behind me here, some tall trees blocking the view so I'm gonna hike out to a point I just looked out for over here and uh, to kind of get a view of the valley and the horizon uh, and I'll set up camp right there instead hiking out to my spot just to a point overlooking the valley this place has all kinds of deer everywhere I go you can just see behind me there's a deer just right up there Scared the crap out of me, just popped out behind a bush. Probably scared him as well. All right, back to the comment. All right, just hiked out to the spot. I'm gonna set up. Hopefully, get this uh, comment neo wise.
So my plan for the night is to have the two cameras running. Uh, first, the uh, Canon R on a 15 to 35 millimeter, uh, doing a time lapse uh, of the sunset into night into the uh, comet coming from above down over the horizon. Uh, it's about four hours. I'm doing about a six second interval. Uh, I have it on AV mode currently, uh, F13, uh, ISO 100. Uh, I have my camera so that it will not go beyond a four second exposure. Uh, so I, I got to monitor the camera a little bit. Once it gets close to that uh, four second shutter speed, uh, I'll start reducing the aperture uh, and then um, eventually I'll be increasing ISO uh, once I have the uh, max aperture that I want and the maximum shutter that I want. Uh, so I should only have to make a few adjustments throughout the night, the AV mode to begin with, then I'll switch over to the manual mode. My second camera is going to be on a star tracker uh, and uh, I'm going to be using the Canon uh, 5DS and uh, the 100 to 400 uh, 5.6. Uh, so that one I will have to pull our line and uh, get set up though I need Polaris out to pull or align it and uh, I have some time before the comet makes an appearance. Uh, so. I'll set that one up. I also forgot some stuff in the car, so I gotta hike back, grab that, and come back out. All right, stay tuned. Uh, it just got dark enough to see the comet. I set up the 5DS and the 100 to 400 millimeter on the star tracker, got it polar aligned. The uh, Canon R with the 15 to 35 millimeter is still going with its time lapse. Um, I just uh, took my first shot of the comet, got it lined up, and uh, it's coming along nicely. I had to hike to the car a couple times and saw some deer. Uh, they scared me, I scared them. Uh, we stepped on some bear poop on the way back to the car. Not the most uh, comforting comforting feeling in the world, but it didn't look fresh, so no worries there. Um, so here, let's take a look at the 5DS on the 100 to 400 and the Star Tracker. This is the first shot I took on the 5DS and the 100 to 400 uh, on the Star Tracker. I'm pretty pleased with how it came out. Uh, 30 second exposure. Took a little bit of time to line up the shot with the comet, uh, but uh, but overall I think this is going to turn out pretty nicely. Um, uh, we just got back, uh, packed up the cameras. It's a little bit past uh, midnight right now. Uh, we got to hike back to the car and we have about a two hour drive home. Um, probably crash and then check out the uh, time lapse and the, the, the tracked images uh, tomorrow. And um, it, looks, it looks good from what I've seen, but uh, we'll find out when we get, uh, when I get home. Yesterday was a long day and a, a bit of an adventure, but I was able to enjoy myself and get some decent shots. It's always a bit spooky being in the wilderness late at night when it's so dark outside. I didn't even get home until about 2 in the morning. I've just finished editing up my time lapse and my shots. Overall I'm pretty pleased with the results. A few things I would have done differently. On my wide angle time lapse I should have ramped my interval from 6 seconds for the sunset to maybe 15 to 20 seconds for the nighttime. I was pleased that the Star Tracker was able to handle the 100 to 400 millimeter lens, and I'm generally happy with the results. Unfortunately, my battery did die about 30 minutes from the end of the time lapse, 
which should have shown the comet breaking the horizon, giving a time lapse a nice finish with some foreground, but these things do happen. The 5DS did have some banding issues, which is common with Canon, and it's not known to be a good low light camera. I do want to thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the experience. Please like and subscribe for upcoming photography adventures, guides, tutorials, and reviews. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Without further ado, the payoff. See you next time.